So I take a trip to San Francisco today and I grab my trusty California compliant weapon here and oh, not so trusty. Look at that, no air in it. And the ODARC 30 time I was leaving in the morning didn't have time to pump it up or even rely on it. So that is not a reliable gun in my book if it lo loses air. So somewhere this thing's leaking and uh, until I can assure that it can hold air, it is not a trustworthy gun. So I found out where the leak is with a little bit of soapy water. It's right there on that seal. So this barrel you know, that's, so that design, that'll kind of, they use this for a, a reserve of air right here, but that, that's where it's leaking, right there on that seal. So, don't think that was such a bright plan. So, I took it apart, or that much of it apart. So it's got two rubber seals there that, inside that one now see that hole right there <clears throat> there is a video online that the factory tells you how you can uh, increase the power by drilling that hole out right there so increasing the diameter size on it probably too if you like chamfer at the end so more air flows into it But you see it's got two O-rings right there. And that's what was like leaking out these O-rings. So I'll have to uh, take a micrometer, see what the size is on them to get those new O-rings. Because probably not gonna get any assistance from the seller who I bought it from, that Patriot Air Guns. Um, right now going through a dispute with the one that Russ got because it wasn't getting anywhere near the stated velocities for the 22. And that's why he sent the 25 back because he wanted the 22. But the 22 is putting out the same velocity as this one at, you know, pretty much half the, the weight of the pellet that this one's putting out. So it's, you know, Nothing there. It's basically putting out the velocity that the European model is putting out, so where they're limited. But the European model comes with two um, plenums for it. So, what is it, plenum or? Yeah, it's the deal right back in here that um, comes with an extra one. So, you, if you want to put it in, increase the speed of it, but um, makes it illegal, I guess, over in certain countries like Germany. Anyway, so that's, that's the skimmy what's going on with this one. Um, I went to go pump it up and it was leaking through that joint right there. I squirted a little bit of water on it. Sure enough, that's where it was bubbling up right through there. So until that gets ironed out and, uh, puts, put the seals in there, um, it's just not a reliable gun because, you know, it's not holding air and <laughs> I'm not going to have a gun that I, I got to pump up every time I got to take out of the house and then it's losing air slowly. Had it with a Benjamin Rogue and sent it back to the factory. They still never fixed it and then they disconnect, discontinued the Benjamin Rogue. So now I'm stuck with a gun that Pyramid Air can't fix it. Um, I've already sent it back to the factory and they didn't fix it. So that's probably why they discontinued it because that electronic valve in the Benjamin Rogue was having a leaking problem. So one of the frustrating things with, with air guns is um, leaks. And, you know, it happens. So, but not on a new gun. I mean, this gun is pretty damn new. I haven't had it that long. And, uh, I mean, I've got some air guns that I've had for many, many years. I mean, they're very old, you know, been having air guns for a long time that don't leak. So I have a, an Air Force 
Mars Condor that I've had for probably 15 years and it's now developed a leak. And then I called up the factory and said, hey, you know, can you send me a new um, uh, part to fix it? And they said, oh, well, yeah, did you register the gun? I'm like, well, I thought I did. I mean, with the company that I bought it from. So, and then Pyramid Air, I've asked them, can you send me the documentation that I bought it from you guys? And they said, no, oh, well, that's on an old computer system. I'll have to look for it and uh, try to find it. And haven't heard back from them on it. So, yeah, so I probably need to get a new, um, either buy a new tank with uh, the valve in it or get another valve. So, we'll see. So, on this O-ring, kind of a tight fit right there to have to kind of drag that O-ring to get it through there without having to take that bottom cylinder off. But the other thing I noticed with it, see the crease in it? You know, it should, for a new O-ring, should be a nice, supple, soft rubber. But it feels like it's hard. So the rubber has like a lot of uh, like nylon or something in it. So some inferior rubber. Kind of like with, you know, these Asian tires. You know, sometimes they're just, they, you, you get some of this equipment and the, within a year the rubber's all cracked up. And it's, you know, less rubber and more plastics in them. So, I think that's, uh, see the, the lines in it? Yeah, kind of uh, garbage rubber. See the line right there? Yeah, um, it just feels like a real hard plasticky rubber. Manufacturing issue right there for sure so the inside diameter of the o-ring should be like just slightly over one inch probably be a one inch be fine now so i measured on the inside of the deal that's kind of odd So I measured this right here, so the insides of the groove, right there. Very difficult to do it on camera by yourself. Okay, so that's what I get on the inside of that groove that the only is supposed to fit. But if I measure that, yeah, it's about right. Same. Okay. Now, to measure the thickness of it, so 0 0.099, it probably should be just slightly well, it's a probably point zero ten would be probably appropriate. So I have to get an O-ring that measures that size to replace it with. So in the meantime, what I'm doing right now is trying to soften these up with some um, oil. So I just put in a, in a cup on the, the stove at the lowest setting for overnight. Um, so I'll just soak in some warm um, vegetable oil. I'm just using extra virgin olive oil um, to let it eh, soften the rubber up. So already just to let it soak a little bit, it's feeling much softer and more supple. So not as plasticky feeling. So we'll see that. And I was just soaking it in there in some hot oil for about 15-20 minutes.
So I'll just let it sit for the night before I slap it together and then we'll test it, see if it leaks. But at least I know now what size rubber uh, O-rings I need to get to replace that with. So we got it back together and it's not leaking. So far so good holding air. So I'm gonna check it in the morning, see if it leaks any out. Um, I did a soap test around. It was leaking a little bit around that one, but I just tightened it some more and it stopped. But no more leak on, on that right there. I did have um, extra O-ring in the kit here, but it only came with one extra O-ring. And of course that had two O-rings on it. So I replaced one of them. The other one, I, I soaked it in oil it uh softened it up feels feels better so um but it's working so in the meantime i'll get another o-ring i don't know what that o-ring is but it's a smaller size so it's not the right o-ring and it comes with a bunch of other o-rings then there it came with these two o-rings too it says breach uh o-ring so that's probably inside here and that's it so we're back in action on it. And thanks for Russ reminding me that it came with extra rings when I looked in the box. Sure enough. Well, the good news is the air held overnight. So leak has been solved. <clears throat> So yeah, it was that leak right in there. Replaced one of the O-rings that came in the kit in the, the box from the gun that it came with. Uh, the other one um, just heated up in some some uh, vegetable oil. Hopefully expanded it some, but I at least have uh, one that I can go get some. Uh, Harbor Freight sells a, a O-ring kit. And I have one somewhere. I have to look around and see if I can find it. But um, that way I can size it up for the O-ring that I know that I need for it. So if it does leak again, I can replace it. But that's uh, that's it. And then, you know, I couldn't send it back for warranty work because the uh, guy at the Patriot Arms, the, his name's uh, Patrick, he says, oh, well, since you posted on YouTube that you dry fired it, you voided the warranty. Well, and like I said before, that's ridiculous because even the factory people void the warranty. And so it's pretty hard to not void the warranty. You have to count your, your pellets. So what I did do, actually one of the, the subscribers, um, well, you can't see it on this one, but I made a little mark on the side. So when it's on that last on the this right here, I made a little uh, mark across it. So when it's on that last pellet, I can look over and say, oh, okay, so I've, that's the, the last one. Or if I see it coming up here, then I know I'm getting on to the, the last one. Um, count your shots. That's uh, best I can say, but it won't. See, one of the things right there, this thing fires from an open bolt. Okay, so the bolt's closed right now. So if I were to cock that back, then I can put the magazine in. And that's another thing I don't like about it. So if you're gonna leave the thing sitting for a long period of time in the cock position with the you know magazine in it to be ready, you're actually uh, keeping that spring that's back inside there compressed. And especially, see, I've got it dialed all the way in and just slightly backed off and my max uh, velocity with the J uh, JSB, um, these dome, dome tip pellets, um, I think those are 26.5 grains. So I'm getting 600 and 630 some feet per second on it. Um, that's as much as I can get out of it. So unless this was modified here, drilled that one section out like they show, there's a video online that the factory people show you how you can drill that out. Basically you're getting more airflow into 
here that's going to you know release that pellet but getting back to the open bolt deal so if you're keeping it cocked all the time you're weakening that spring that's in there so especially since i've got it dialed all the way in and maxed out um it's you know keeping even more tension on it so i'm probably gonna have to just start keeping it um un uncocked keep that thing you know to the side because i don't want to leave too much pressure on that spring because then then i'll have to end up replacing that spring and if you don't have a, a chronograph how do you know what your um, velocities are and if your velocities are decreasing you know other than penetration tests you know say oh okay well it goes through you know one inch pine board now but you know, all of a sudden now you can't get through a one inch pine board. Then, you know, you got a problem going on. Anyway, some things to think about uh, as far as air guns. Um, the seal design on this. I don't know. I mean, yeah, it's nice. You got an extra air reservoir chamber here. But also it creates that leak problem. And... I think a lot of that leak problem too was the inferior uh, quasi rubber seals. It's some, it's like you know the the Chinese tires for your uh, that you get for your wheelbarrow or something. You know they don't last very long. They crack up in, in a year or two and and they're toast because they're the Chinese tend to mix a lot of plastic in with their their rubber, so it's it's not as resilient. So, uh, that being a problem, so think about if you if you get one of these guns, you might have to go through all the seals in it. And you know, one of the things too that, um, yeah, this is a Korean made gun, uh, South Korean, um, but that Hubin, I was thinking the Hubin was a, like a European made gun, like German or something, but actually it's Chinese made. But the velocity on the Hoobin is way, way better. So I don't know if this can, like I said, be modified to get much higher velocities out of it. But it's like night and day with, with Hoobin. The Hoobin with, uh, there's a guy online, he, he's got his cranked up. And he's getting like 960 feet per second on 25 caliber using a 43 grain pellet so huge difference than this so anyways well thanks for watching hope this helps out if anybody else develops a, a leak in their gun how to fix it or if it, they develop a leak in the same spot that i developed it how to fix it so you just run that back through it you're gonna yeah, your just might be in a different spot but the bleed screw, uh, loosen the bleed screw, then it takes all the pressure off. This just by hand, just turned it right, spun it right off. Wasn't a big deal. And then those exposes those two rubber O-rings there and then swapped them out. That's it. Um, very easy job. All right, thanks for watching. If you like this content, please help me out and get the algorithm so that it pushes it out uh, to more people, comes up on their feed. If you give me a thumbs up or even a thumbs down, comment whether you like it or don't like it, all that kind of stuff helps the algorithms, tells YouTube that it's uh, information that for them to, to push out on other people's feeds. All right. Appreciate it. Thanks. Take care.